today we're going to go over the process of installing an x-axis snapback capacitor in a GameCube controller. These are usually installed to eliminate incorrect B turnarounds in Melee due to the controller snapping back after a flick and going far enough to register an input in the opposite direction. For this process, we're going to need a few supplies. A soldering iron, some solder, resin, this is optional but preferred. Uh, it helps with the flow of solder onto the components we'll be installing. Two jumper cables with at least one female end each, or one jumper cable with two female ends that we'll cut in two. Ceramic capacitors. I suggest getting a few different ones between the range of 0.1 microfarads to 0.68 microfarads so you can find which works best for your controller. A solder sucking tool in case you add too much solder and need to start over. Uh, wire cutters and a tri-wing for opening your controller. Now, all of these are going to be able to be found in the description below, including a link to the controller testing tool called Smash Scope that we'll be using later on. Now, start by using the tri-wing to open up the controller. Next, pull out the motherboard from the shell then we're going to remove this back bracket to expose the solder pads of the stick box. Normally you'd need to gently push these wires out of their organizer to take out the rumble motor here from the back bracket, uh, but since this controller already had a vasectomy, we can just remove it along with the bracket. And lastly, push the shoulder wires down along the hole they're attached through so that they don't get pulled out when you lift up the back bracket. This row of three pads on the bottom are our x-axis potentiometer connections. The leftmost is a 3.3 volt line, the middle is a signal for our x-axis potentiometer, and the rightmost is the ground connection. We want to connect a capacitor between the x-axis line and the ground, which will be the two rightmost pads. Take your jumper cables and split them in two, making sure you have two female ends with about an inch or two of wire to work with. We'll be inserting our ceramic capacitor into these. Once they're cut, we'll need to expose a bit of the ends of the wires for later soldering. If you have wire strippers, you can use those to make stripping some of the wire casing off a lot easier. Uh, but since mine were confiscated by the TSA, I had to use my wire cutters to carefully wear down enough casing to pull it off with my fingernails. The recommended way to solder the jumper cables on is by using the resin to help the existing solder flow onto the jumper wires. This doesn't require any new solder. Start by dipping the end of the jumper wire in your resin, or applying it to the tip of your resin pin if you have one of those. Then solder it to either the ground or signal pad, stroking the wire when you do so so that the solder runs up the wire and secures it when it cools. You're going to want to do this for both of them. If you don't have resin, you can also add a bit of new resin coarse solder to give the solder some flow so it'll stick to your jumper cable. Now with your jumpers in place, you can insert a ceramic capacitor. I'm going to start out with 0.33 microfarads, swapping it out for a stronger or a weaker one depending on how the testing we're going to do later on goes. Now before we secure the back bracket in place again, we need to open a small hole for the jumpers to path through, otherwise our back bracket won't sit flush with the board. The easiest way to make this path is to use wire cutters to cut diagonally underneath where the trigger board sits. Much better, the bracket is now sitting flush with the board. Uh, continue to reassemble your controller, making sure to insert your motor's cables back into their organizer if this applies to you. And after confirming your shell won't crush your new installation, and that your Z button is inserted, close up the shell and screw it back together. Mm -hmm. 
If you have a soft modded Wii, you'll want to add Smash Scope to your apps folder for proper testing, as we still need to make sure that the capacitor isn't too low or too high of a value. After loading Smash Scope, enter the oscilloscope and flick your stick left and right. You'll want the red line, which represents your x-axis, to peak just below the green bar. And we can see that the red line is just over it here in these tests, meaning that my current capacitance of 0.33 microfarads is just a little bit too low. But after swapping the capacitor out for a 0.47 microfarad capacitor, it peaks to just under the green bar, which is exactly what we want. And finally, we don't have any more accidental laser turnarounds. If you don't have a soft modded Wii, uh, and like you just have Slippy, you'll just want to start out with a low value for your capacitor, uh, try B turnarounds with uh, Falco, and then work your way up until the capacitance is high enough so that you stop getting those B turnarounds. That way you don't overshoot the capacitance value on your first try. Thank you for watching, hope it helps, and feel free to ask questions in the comments below.